everyone, Health Adventure here. I actually just wrapped up another video. I thought I was gonna stop for the evening, but then I remembered there was another topic I wanted to talk to you guys about um, before, um, you know, moving on to sleep. <laughs> um, so I wanted to talk to you guys about um, something that happened to me, I guess, was it last? I think it was last night. Um, I, lose, I lose track of time sometimes, but I was really, um, you know, I was tired, I, was, I think I was up kind of late, um, but then like an hour and a half later, I woke up and I had like this headache, and you know, I felt like my body was like bubbling or something weird, and like these are all like symptoms related to candida and candida die-off. So if you guys follow my channel, um, I have been working through overcoming some autoimmune um, symptoms uh, related to lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, and scleroderma, and um, I basically have been able to trace down a lot of them, it seems like, are related to my gut health and candida. Um, I take more of a holistic, naturopathic kind of approach, um, just in general, in my life. And it seems to be working for me because I've been doing a raw, vegan, fruitarian diet and a lot of my symptoms have been um, really either, you know, completely either gone or they're a lot less. So, and I've only been doing this for three months, so it's been, thank you so much for the hearts. Um, I've only been doing this for three months, so this is really actually the beginning of my journey with a lot of this, um, especially with detoxing, and I'm kind of new to a lot of it. So I'm just kind of sharing with you guys my experience as I'm going through it and just letting you know um, kind of what I'm going through, and you know, hopefully that can help you guys um, you know, if you have any kind of a similar experience. Um, so I, I wasn't sure last night. Um, when I had this headache and, you know, I had some of these symptoms, if this was more candida happening for some reason or if it was, um, candida die-off. And that's, that's the tricky thing with candida is that the symptoms of candida are very similar to the die-off symptoms, so it's hard to know what's going on. So I thought I kind of would take a, a chance and I took, uh, I had some oregano oil, uh, mixed with water. And I just, because, you know, it's easy, it's not something, you know, that regimen is not something I want to do all the time because the oregano oil can be a little bit hard on the liver, but because I had already brushed my teeth and, you know, I was in bed, I didn't want to um, take my other uh, supplement, which was, uh, um, what's it called, the oil, something in glycerin, um, I can't think of it, olive leaf extract, that's what it was. Um, so I didn't want to take that, and then I also had um, a Dr. Robert Morris herb that's like a pill, but I kind of, I, I still am not sure how strong that one is yet, so I just, I thought I'd go for something strong. So I, I, I took a couple sips, and then my headache got even worse. <laughs> so I was like, okay, well, I guess this is die-off symptoms, right? And then I was kind of like thinking, okay, so what can I do to remedy this? And it was really weird because, like, earlier that day I was, you know, in the kitchen probably cutting up watermelon or something and staring at all these herbs and stuff that I have sitting on my counter now. I have, like, so many of them. And I was looking at the activated charcoal that I had tried as part of, um, I had mixed it with this drink that was not very tasty at all. <laughs> um, but it was supposed to be kind of part of, like, a colon cleanse. And I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do with this or if I'm going to need this again because I don't know if I'm going to try that drink again. And I was just kind of like... Charcoal isn't healthy for you. Okay, um, I would be curious to know why, because um, actually I did end up using the activated charcoal and it did seem to help a lot, um, because all of a sudden once I took it, and now I'm sure there's probably other ways I could have um, remedied the headache, um, maybe either with bentonite clay or, or distilled water or something that would maybe pull some of those toxins out, um, but I decided to go ahead and use the activated charcoal. I mixed it in some water, and, you know, it took a little bit, you know, maybe 20 or 30 minutes or so, um, gradually my headache started going away. And I looked up, there was an article online um, that was just talking about charcoal pollutes your body can cause cancer. Okay, I'd be curious to know, um, I'll, I'll look into that and, and see. I haven't heard about that. Um, I, I definitely, if that is true, then, you know, I probably don't want to continue taking it. Um, 
but I haven't really heard that about activated charcoal, so that is definitely interesting if that is the case. Um, it did seem to help, at least temporarily, um, for my body. You know, I hope I hope that it's not uh, cancerous, like you're saying. I will I will look into that, and, and and if that is the case, you know, I'm sure there are other methods, like I was saying, that I could have tried. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm like my throat is dry. Um, I need some water. Um, but yeah, I, I, if, there, if that's the case, there's some other methods, I'm sure, like distilled water or bentonite clay that maybe would be a little bit better then. So um, thank you for bringing that to my attention. Um, but it did, <laughs> either way, the activated charcoal did end up working for me, and I was able to go to sleep after that. So. And it seems like it's in general, um, oh, this, this website that I was reading that was actually suggesting using um, activated charcoal for detox symptoms was also talking about how a lot of people when they are trying to get rid of candida, they, they stop their treatment because it's just too intense, it's too much. And um, the, the activated charcoal, something like that, can help alleviate some of those really intense die-off symptoms because what happens is when the yeast dies in your body, it, it releases these toxins that are just floating around, so it can be a lot for your body to to take. So that definitely seemed to help me. Um, and yeah, I'll look into some of the, maybe an alternative method if, if it turns out that charcoal isn't the best way to go. But I thought I would share my experience with you guys, and um, you know, if you guys are going through anything similar, then you know, maybe this video would be helpful for you because it was kind of, it was kind of funny that earlier in the day I was looking at the charcoal like, what am I gonna do with this? I don't know if I need it really, except maybe for, I don't know, some crazy poisoning or something if something happened, but what it was, that's not gonna happen. So I was like, okay, what am I gonna do with this? And then later that evening it actually ended up being useful for me. So. Um, yeah, anyway, um, again, my name is Ellery, and I'm probably going to get to bed here soon, it is a little bit late, um, but I don't know, since you guys are here, I'm kind of like, maybe I'll extend the video a little bit longer, um, just to, again, go through, you know, who I am and, um, what my channel is. Basically, I've been, um, eating raw vegan for the last three months, pretty much fruitarian, and this is because I have been suffering from a lot of symptoms related to autoimmune disorders, so lupus, scleroderma, and um, rheumatoid arthritis. So uh, what happened was there were a, a couple months actually where I was having a lot of issues with my hands. They were closing up on me and they're really sore. It was hard to use them just throughout the day. Um, so it was really impacting my quality of life. And I had already kind of gone through, you know, the, the typical pharmaceutical, conventional medicine approach with other things in my life, and those things didn't end up working out for me very well. I ended up being on a medication for much longer than I ever should have been. Um, sorry. <laughs> um, I was on Nexium. It was, it was a proton pump inhibitor for seven years. And I was put on that medication when I was very young, when I was 13. So I had wished that, you know, maybe my doctors at the time would have tried to, um, you know, try to find something, maybe a, a root cause of what was going on. I really couldn't understand why I was having problems with reflux uh, in the first place. I ate actually what I considered to be very healthy. Um, I was predominantly vegetarian most of the time I was on that medication, if not the entire time. I was on that medication, so it didn't really make sense to me why I would be having things like reflux, which is something that I considered <laughs> someone who's maybe on the kind of typical SAD diet, the uh, standard American diet, um, that's something that I would have considered um, would be somebody who would be more of a candidate for acid reflux. So, um, but that that approach was never really taken. I was always just giving these medications and I just did what the doctor said. And it turned out that this medication uh, is actually now only recommended to be taken for four to, to eight weeks because it can cause things like kidney failure. So, uh, you know, this medication is definitely, it can cause a lot of negative effect, of, effects. And what I found is that I think it, it really impacted my bone density because I've had, and probably even contributed to some of the tendonitis issues that I've had, possibly. I've just had a lot of other different health issues come up and I wouldn't be surprised if some of it was related to the toxicity of that medication. 
Now, there's many other things, too, that could be factors. Obviously, our environment and everything is, is, is not the cleanest. So, you know, I'm sure that's a contributing factor as well. But, you know, just that, that there are so many things. Like, for example, I went to the orthopedic doctor and I had some issues with my knees and he took some x-rays and he's like, you know, and he didn't say this in the kindest way, but he was like, you know, you look like you have the bones of a 50 year old. Um, so, and, and I, you know, I'm 25 right now. That was a couple years ago that he said that. So, and, and actually since I cut out meat and dairy from my diet, I had some x-rays done, um, a little bit more recently and there was a slight improvement actually in my bone density. So, uh, I definitely think that was a good, you know, step in the right direction, but it definitely was not enough. Just going vegan, uh, wasn't enough to, uh, fix some of these other problems that I actually started having, um, even after going vegan. So once I found about the raw vegan diet, um, I was able to completely, um, my, my hands got better, uh, after a week or two of being on the raw vegan diet. And I've also found that vegetables seem to trigger my hands. Um, so I won't be able to um, open my hands sometimes. Like for example, I tried eating um, some, some sweet corn. That didn't work for me. <laughs> my hands completely closed up uh, on me um, during the evening. So I didn't try that again. Um, I've tried things like bok choy, carrots, etc., etc. I've tried so many different types of vegetables just to see if any of them would work for me. And so far, at least right now, uh, it doesn't seem like my gut can handle it. So I'm just keeping it simple and I'm just doing completely 100% fruit. So it sounds kind of crazy. Um, the way I've been doing it, I've just been going to Whole Foods and basically getting a lot of fruits by the case. Um, and when I have time, sometimes I'll go downtown to the LA wholesale market and they have um, wholesale prices for fruit. So I'll get some more uh, cost-friendly uh, organic vegetables down there sometimes. I've been kind of slacking on that a little bit lately. Um, but that's, that's how I've been doing it, and it's been working out for me so far. Um, you know, I've been really conscientious about trying to keep my teeth super clean um, after I eat. You know, I'll, I'll brush my teeth like 30 minutes after um, because it can be a little bit hard on the teeth, I noticed. Um, but the rest of my body is really appreciating it. So I'm just continuing to do that. Um, I've been trying to incorporate some other things just to see if, uh, if my body can handle it. Like I tried some sushi uh, and that didn't really go too well. So there's just uh, some different things I've been trying to see what my body can handle to maybe lessen some of the, at least lessen some of the fruit that's passing my teeth. But it seems like right now, um, fruit is the way for me to go. So I don't know how long I'll do this, if I'll do it for several years. Like I just kind of have to see, you know, if I do some, some blood work and it doesn't look too good, you know, maybe I'll have to make some changes. So it all, I'm all just going with the flow and I'll, I'll make adjustments as I need. So that is the plan, everybody. <laughs> so, um, thank you so much again for watching. I really appreciate you guys. Um, and you know, I'm going to look into that thing that someone said about the activated charcoal uh, and see if I can find anything on that. And I will share it with you, uh, whatever research I find. So you guys, if you are interested in keeping, uh, tabs on what's going on, uh, you can follow my channel, The Health Adventurer, and I also have a website, thehealthadventurer.com. So I will see you again next time. Thank you so much, and have a good evening. Bye-bye.